Let's continue on with chapter two and we're going to do a few more problems and we're going to start with a weight problem. Now the weight formula here is weight is mass times gravity and it's really just a modification of Newton's second law that says force is mass times acceleration. Instead of F we're going to put in W for weight. Weight is a force so we can substitute W for F. As well, acceleration, we're going to use acceleration due to gravity in order to calculate the weight of an object. So let's go ahead and start here. Um, they're giving us 400 grams as our starting um, mass, all right? And whenever we're, we are dealing with a force, which weight is a force, we have to be in newtons. And whenever we're in newtons, our units have to be in kilograms, meters, and seconds. So the first thing I want to do is convert 400 uh, grams into kilograms. So there are 1,000 grams per 1 kilogram. Okay, And so that comes out to be 0.4 grams. Now we can, using this formula here, we can substitute in 0.4 kilograms and multiply that by gravity on Earth, 9.8 meters per second squared. And when we do that, we get 3.92 newtons. Or four newtons. Okay? Fairly straightforward problem there. Just keep in mind that weight is a force uh, and uh, the units therefore are going to be in newtons. Here's another problem related to weight and mass. We're going to start out with a salami that weighs three pounds and they want to know what that equivalent is uh, in kilograms. So what is its mass in kilograms? So we have to know how many pounds there are in a kilogram. So we look that up in a table and we find that there are 2.21, I'm sorry, 2.2 pounds per one kilogram. So if we take three pounds times one divided by 2.2, we end up with 1.36 kilograms. or four kilograms. So that is our answer. Here we're going to calculate motion that is not in a straight line as we've done previously, but going in a circle. And in order to do that, we're going to use centripetal force. So the formula for centripetal force is the mass times the velocity squared divided by the radius. This is a force. We're in the Newtons because it is a force. So let's just start out here. And our mass, 1,200 kilograms. So let's put that in there. And our speed is 6 meters per second. And we cannot forget to square that or we won't get the right answer, obviously. And then our radius of the curve, or the turn that we're taking, is 30 meters. So you just multiply 1,200 times 6 times 6 divided by 30, and you get 1,440 newtons. So anytime you're calculating motion, uh, that is going in a circle, we want to use that centripetal force formula for this chapter, okay? And the last problem that I'm going to do for chapter 2 deals with Newton's law of gravity. And so we can start gravity as a force, or we're going to consider it a force. And it is equal to big G times the mass of one object times the mass of another object divided by the distance between those objects squared. 
So the relationship then between gravitational force and the radius is what we call an inverse square. And we see these quite a bit in the world of astronomy and physics. Um, so I don't have an actual problem where we're going to uh, plug in numbers for the objects that we're calculating the force for. But the question is, if the Earth were three times as far from the Sun as it is now, the gravitational force exerted on it by the Sun would be what? And so when we're looking at these conceptual problems, these values up here don't really matter. You can just put in ones because they don't change uh, as the, the problem changes, all right? So originally, let's say that the Earth were, was, to make life simple, one meter from the sun because one is easy to multiply and divide by. So if that were true, then we could take 1 times 1 times 1 divided by 1 squared, and we'd get a force of 1 newton. But this problem now says that we are three times as far from the sun. So instead of 1 here, we are going to put in a 3. We're three times as far, so we just put the three in there and we square it. So we have one times one times one, those values don't change, over three squared. So one over three squared is one ninth of the value. That means it goes down by nine because this is a, an inverse relationship, but the squared here makes it non-proportional. So it become one ninth the amount, um, or one ninth of a newton, or whatever you want to call it, because we're using these simple numbers. But in general, we don't even need that. We can just say that the gravitational force becomes one ninth the value that it was when the Earth was in its first position, and then subsequently moved three times as far. So inverse square relationship. And that's all I have for chapter two. Those are the main uh, problems that you need to be able to do uh, to succeed on the test.